welcome to the Work Hard People's Podcast. Hope everybody out there is having a great day. I'm James, the old guy. We have the beautiful Sarah Burkholz with us, who also happens to be my sister. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, James? I'm good. I'm good. I can't complain. It's a great day. However, I think I'm going to have to change the name of the uh, the podcast from the Work Hard People's Podcast to the Bald and the Beautiful because it seems like my bald ass keeps having pretty people on, and I'm not one of them. <laughs> so <laughs> you're pretty in a masculine way. Uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Thanks for the save, sis. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So. Today, uh, we are going to talk a little bit about yoga. We're going to discuss um, uh, basically uh, how yoga benefits the the body and the mind. And, you know, we, we've had a lot of conversations on this podcast um, about different areas of fitness, and I, I like them all. I think they all have a benefit. Different people can get things from from different areas. And since I'm old, i got to put these reading glasses on because I want to read something here just to kind of kick it off. So... Um, you know, if you just look up yoga online, it says derived from the Sanskrit word yuji, meaning yoke or union. Yoga is an ancient practice that brings together mind and body. Um, and when you read the benefits of it, I mean, the things that it does, and I've seen some of these things just even with my clients, just in regular stretching exercises, but like improves flexibility, builds strength, increases muscle tone, improves balance supports joint health, prevents back pain, teaches better breathing, fosters mental calmness, reduces stress, and increases self-confidence. So uh, from any fitness standpoint, uh, yoga can benefit you. And, you know, I know a lot of uh, actually, you know, gym rats, bodybuilders that, uh, and, and just different fitness junkies that do yoga for just that. And, and one of the great things we have with you, Sarah, is you're, you're an instructor as well or a, a yoga teacher um explain a little bit about that how did how did you first let, let's dive back what first drew you to yoga so i think just the mental aspects and the philosophical aspects were what were most interesting to me at first i was really into eastern philosophy mysticism religion um, hinduism buddhism all of those things growing up and always just read about enlightened people and just thought it would be pretty cool to be able to kind of travel that spiritual path. And that's what the draw was for me. Um, then I, I, I read some books about yoga, but I never really knew how to did it, how to do it. I didn't have an instructor. Um, eventually I tried to do some of it by reading a book and seeing pictures at home when I was a teenager. And then after I had two children, I realized now is the time if I want to get into yoga, I can use it as fitness, especially since I had hurt my ankle and was having trouble doing the sports that I love to do, which were like trail running. I couldn't do that because I kept rolling my ankle. So I, I thought, now I'm going to try to learn how to do yoga. So I, you um, know, real quick, real quick, you were too. Yeah. I remember very, you, very young. You were tapped into your kind of that, that spiritual side, that Hinduism. I remember when you uh, first decided to, you know, when you first started going down the vegetarian path, uh, you weren't doing it for any other reason than uh, mainly it was just like, you kind of felt that, you know, the animals were, we're beings on this planet as well, and we ought not eat them. I mean, you you always have kind of tapped into that. And it's been nice because watching you over the years, I mean, you're such a kind human being. And all of that, I've watched that foster since, you know, since we were very young. So it's 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 nice to it's nice to see that that has just carried through. So go on. Sorry to break in. I just I just wanted to let oh, let the viewers know kind of uh my own perspective of watching that little bit of transformation that I got to watch so oh thanks yeah I mean it said even in the Bhagavad Gita which is a very old yoga book um that people are attracted to yoga and it, they're born into it they um they believe in reincarnation and 
that one soul carries over through various lifetimes. And that once you're on the path of yoga, you're always going to be attracted to it every life. So I kind of like that. And I, I did feel just always drawn to yoga philosophy and eventually the practice of it. Um, learned by myself at home, watching videos, eventually made my way to a yoga class where I discovered that I was doing everything wrong. My alignment was horrible. And <laughs> um, the teacher fixed everything that I did. They just kept pushing me back into the correct alignment. And so that's when I realized I need to have a yoga teacher. Um, so that was when I was about 24, I believe, 24 or 25. That's yeah. important too to recognize that because, you know, in fitness, in all branches of fitness, you will find, you know, people usually start like that by themselves. They think, I don't need a coach. Yeah. I don't need an instructor. And the, the, I get it. I mean, that's great. Start whatever you're doing, start something, right? Cause it's going to benefit your, your mind. It's going to benefit your body, your health, your overall, overlong uh, or overall longevity. So whatever start, but, here's where the benefit comes in, right? Once you create those habits of a wrong movement, whether it be just a bench press or an arm curl or a yoga pose, you get in that wrong position and you develop that habit. It is so much harder. Like when I, when I work with clients that have been lifting for a long period of time, it takes me a lot longer to get them in the right position than if somebody comes to me green. Yeah. Yep. It's true. I noticed the same thing. And one other thing I noticed with my students is if they have a sports background, they just fall right into it so easily. But if they don't have a sports background, there's a lot more learning to be done because they don't understand where their body is in space. They have no pre yeah. pro pre. And so they have to learn that as adults and it's really hard. So, you know, if, if anyone's out there and they want to start yoga, they don't have any sports background, be really gentle on yourself and give yourself the grace and the time to learn yeah. because it can be difficult. Learn slowly. I love that you yeah. said that they don't understand where their body is in space because, mm -hmm. you know, I remember early on, uh, you know, I, I played uh, football through high school and um, I remember early on uh, I had a coach tell me, hey, in the off season, you should practice with the gymnastics team. Cool. And so I used to do that. I used to go do, you know, tumbling drills and I could do back handsprings and standing backflips and stuff. And um it taught me awareness in space. It taught me where my body was and the way that translated onto the football field, uh, you know, especially as a, as a ball carrier, you know, when you're getting hit, hit around, it really helped with balance and just kind of knowing direction and, and where you are in space. It's, it's, a, it's a, that's a great lesson to learn. I, I love that you brought that up. Why did you get into, what was the spark that said, Hey, I, I want to teach this. I want to start teaching you. Um, well, I, I discovered this certain style of practice called Mysore style. And we did not have that in Salt Lake City where I grew up. There was no Mysore class. So that was kind of the germination of it. I, I was just like, well, if, if I can't take the class, at least I can learn how to teach it and other people can take it. What is so, my, what is that? My source? What is that? Mysore is a city in India, but it's also the name of the style of yoga that I teach generally. Mm -hmm. um, so I teach Ashtanga yoga and Mysore is the style and there there weren't any of those classes here. So I, I decided, well, I want to teach that then. If I can't go to it, at least I can teach it and other people can go to yeah. it. Yeah, And I've seen you get into <laughs> some crazy stuff and I'll post some pictures on here, people. She has sent me some p pictures. And uh, Sarah, I mean, you get into some of the craziest position. I'm like, man, how is she not folding in half? Is that yeah. kind of the style? That, is that that style? That's a good question. So it, it does come out of that style, what I do. So it, overall, it's called Ashtanga Yoga, which means eight limbs of yoga. And then 
as far as what we do on the yoga mat, um, there's two different styles of practice. There's my source style, and then there's a led class where everybody's led by the teacher to do poses together as, at the same time. The my source class is more of a one-on-one -on -one instruction within a group setting. So you might walk into a my source room and see people of all abilities, probably like you do in a weight room or a fitness yeah. room, right? People are beginners to experts and they all practice together and so you give everyone individual instructions slowly they keep adding on new postures so it starts very basic very simple and over the years you learn more and more and you just set a really solid foundation and slowly evolve into doing some of those weird crazy looking postures that you see yeah and i mean it, it's it's amazing when I see um, some of your pictures, especially some of the locations that you choose with the backgrounds. I mean, it is so beautiful. It's almost like a piece of art. You know, it's like I'd like to take a snapshot, put it on, uh, you know, a, a canvas and frame that thing. They, they're beautiful. So um, also, I, I know you can see people a lot of this stuff on your Instagram. What What's your Instagram? Again, can you it's, say it? And uh, I'll, I'll put a note up on it. It's Pornam Ava Vashishate. Do you want me to spell it? No, I have your Instagram and I will type it okay. out on the screen for sure so people can, yeah. can check you it's out because it's awesome to see. So what's that word? Thanks. What's that come from? So it's actually like a whole yoga philosophy essentially in one word. And what it means is that everything is one, everything is whole, W-H-O-L-E. And if you take something away from the whole, it's still whole and pure. So it, it's yeah. still, even if you move it around, it's still one thing. And, and that's what we all are. And, and that's kind of the idea of yoga is we're always coming back to ourselves, which is connected with all other beings, which is connected to the entire universe. Yeah, no, that that's awesome. I know, like, for me, um, I always coach. Uh, I coach my clients, and we, we have long conversations about flexibility because flexibility is so important in muscle health, um, joint health, um, uh, being more resistant to injury, all of these things when you're, when you're flexible. It, it's a benefit to the body, whether you're in the weight room or not. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I, I have – tried some yoga stuff back in the day i can't do it now with my foot thing i mean there's probably some stuff i could do like the mental aspect sure. and the breathing but some of the stuff just because i have to wear this stupid boot with my broken foot all the time but um i'm gonna tell you right now if you've never done it and you think you're strong <laughs> go do it because the amount of core strength and actual physical strength that you need to do some of those things it's it's beyond what you would ever think it would be just looking at it yeah it, it it's really uh specific like I, I sometimes get really muscly looking guys that just look so so strong but they don't have this specific type of core strength to do certain asanas that maybe someone who doesn't look as strong can easily do. It's, it's interesting, but you know, you train for it and slowly it grows over time. And I think that's one of the problems with the way that people perceive yoga is that they, they go to a class like that and they're like, I'm not strong enough. I'm not flexible enough. I can't do this. But I think they found their own class to start with. Like you should find the specific class for where your body is at and find a good teacher who can help you with where you're at. Yeah. I, I think that's key because, you know, I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a guy, I like to lift a lot of weight, heavy weight. And I, I like, I don't do like one rep max stuff. I like to build myself up where I'm lifting heavy weight for lots of reps and uh mm -hmm. so people see that and they're like wow you know i can't i can't do that no you start where you need to start and it is very important to have someone there to guide you along the way whether it be a friend who's very knowledgeable in the proper way to do things or you go get yourself a coach at least at first so you know my philosophy i'm i'm a different type of coach i i do work with uh some bodybuilders um, and that's, that's a completely different type of coaching, but like my, my clients that I train that are just your average Joe, just want to get in shape, lose weight, that kind of stuff. Um, 
I have a discussion with them during their initial interview when I when I bring them onto my platform and I explain to them, listen, my job is to teach you and coach you uh, coach the information so that you can one day do it by yourself. I don't want to be your coach forever. Now, if you want to get into an activity or you want to train for a sport, yeah, I can continue to train you along that. But I want you to learn it for yourself because that's what a true teacher and coach should do, right? You teach them so mm -hmm. that they can learn it for themselves so that they can adapt that in their daily lives and they don't need me anymore. That's my ultimate goal, which is kind of counterintuitive, right, if you're making money off coaching. But my ultimate goal is to have my clients not need me anymore. Yeah. I, that's very similar to the my source style approach. We teach them things. They have to memorize a sequence, just like memorizing, you know, all the things that you're teaching your clients and then they can go home and do it. If they have, you know, we, we don't need too much equipment doing yoga, but I, I'm sure it's yeah. quite a similar idea. Yeah, no, yeah. that's awesome. But if, and then, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say in this system, though, you can just keep going and going and, and learning more and more. And so it it is pretty good to to stick with the community and the teacher. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, it's good. Yeah. Anytime you want to level up, right? You want to find yeah. someone that's at that next level that could kind of get you mm -hmm. there. So I, I want to mm -hmm. talk a little bit about you. Start, I don't I don't know when you started doing this. And I almost think of it as like uh almost like a pilgrimage, but when did you start taking your trips to India and were you going over there? Was it initially to go over there and learn from some of the masters that are over there? Um, the first time was in 2009 and I took a teacher training and it was from a student that had studied with one of the masters and that master had passed away and that's the person I originally wanted to study with, but I just couldn't make the opportunity happen before he died. And so I went and studied with one of his students over there and I got a teaching certificate. And so that was the first time I went. And then I went back a couple of years later, but I had a mishap. I it had this crazy thing happen where I had a layover in France and I lost my passport. I think it was oh. stolen, but maybe I oh, lost man. it. Lost <laughs> credit cards like my whole wallet uh, was gone yeah and so i got stuck in europe and was only able to be in india for about less than a week when i finally made it so that trip was yeah. crazy it didn't really count that much but i did get to study with a, a really great master teacher for a few days i had planned on being there for a month and then after that it was another few years um till i went back but I have now been seven times in all and getting ready to go again in November. Yeah. And I, I do stay with a master now. Yeah. Yeah. I love the, I love the pictures you send when they're, when you're over there. Um, just yeah. all the different things that you're getting into and uh, you know, the, you're the, cause you, you're really good about documenting what you're doing and putting it up on your Instagram. So it's, it's nice to see. And then, you know, when I, call you randomly and it's like the middle of the night i'm sorry <laughs> you're like i don't know where you are maybe yeah. you're in the u.s yeah maybe who knows <laughs> that's funny yeah the cultural aspect of it is really cool just to go to where yoga came from and you know the things are changing of course all over the world but you're still yeah. able to see some idea of the roots of yoga and just the culture that came out of it and it, it's a really beautiful place and special yeah i would i would love to go to india not for the yoga aspect but um i've had a lot of good uh interactions with um, many people from India over here. I had some really good coworkers that I were when I was with JP Morgan. Uh, I, I had some really good people and that really introduced me to a lot of the culture and the food. And, you know, you know me, I'm a foodie, oh, you know, fat dude over here. Oh, but dude no. so but good. the food is delicious. And, 
you know, okay. I've had, you know, I just, I find it very fascinating. So I would love to go over there one time, one day and see it, you know, firsthand, just interact with the people because all of the people that I've met that come from there have been very, gen, uh, very genuine, very gracious, kind people. And uh, it's just been, it's been a joy to, you know, the, the opportunities that I've had to speak with them and discuss cultures. I had this buddy I worked with, um, what was his name? Uh, last name's Kumar, I think. And um, uh, at his wedding, so his wife did the the full henna thing, right? When they cool. they got married over here. But I, I remember seeing the her just in the full henna. And I was like, man, that is amazing. Just the whole ceremony of it all is great. So beautiful. Yeah. And like you said, the people are not everyone. Of course, there's some oh, not, yeah, no. bad apples in every bunch. Yeah, everywhere. Overall, I I trust Indian people way more than I trust American people. Like, you can leave something somewhere and nobody will steal it. Like, they'll, you know, nobody will shortchange you. They might, like, charge you a lot on the street, but if you bargain them down, they're not going to try to cheat you. It's amazing. Yeah. They're just so kind. Yeah. No, that's Great the experience people. I've had with, I, I, like you say, there's bad apples in every bunch. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. I mean, you, if you want to find a jerk, you can find them. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, that, that's awesome. So what, what, what's this trip about? Are you going over to train again or just to, to mm -hmm. visit or, or what are you doing? So I studied a school there called Sharat Yoga Center and oh. It's a it's a yoga school and my guru teaches there. So I'm going to, to practice with him for two months um, to train and hopefully to be an assistant for him. Last time I went out, he let me assist and it was really fun. He has he takes yeah. about 300 students at a time and he, he takes them in batches all throughout the morning. So there's maybe like 65 to 70 per batch. And he goes from about 4 a.m. till 10 or 10.30 a.m. and teaches all morning long. He has assistance the whole time. So I hope to also assist as well as go train. Oh, yeah, that's um, awesome. And, and have you po you've posted pictures with him, right? Uh-huh. I, yeah, I, I, think I, I think I can see him in my face, the guy that, in my mind, the guy that you're talking about, so... Yeah, he's great. He's so fun to work with. He's really quite stern, but also very, very kind. So he he's scary, but he's also very sweet. <laughs> yeah, and I good. think that makes a good teacher. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna listen. To him, yeah, um, if you're slightly scared. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But also you trust. Yeah. Well, so he's what wonderful. level? What level are you at on your way? Are are you are you are you wanting to become a master instructor? Is that your ultimate goal on the teaching side? Um. Yeah. I mean, I just want to keep getting better and better at teaching for sure, and as well as getting better at just being a practitioner. Um, yeah. So there's there are different levels to the system that I'm in. Um, so I'm a level two authorized Ashtanga teacher. Um, there's level one, and then there's kind of a, a level two, a part level two, um, where you can teach. So let me back up. With level one, you can teach what's called primary series. With level two, you can teach either half intermediate as well as primary or full intermediate as well as primary. So I am the I can teach the full intermediate as well as the primary sequence. So the next level would be to be able to teach the third sequence, which is advanced asana. And you have to first complete that sequence under the guru. And so I've been working on that. So I'm going to go back and hopefully keep working on that with him. And maybe eventually I'll, I'll get that authorization as well. But I don't know. It could take a long time. It, yeah. it sounds very simple, one, two, three levels, but it can take years and years and years. It usually takes at least three to four years to just get to the first level. So Yeah. You know, I, I tell people this all the time and I, it sounds like this applies the crossover into yoga as well. But I, I tell people, I'm like, listen, fitness will never be measured in days and weeks. It's measured mm -hmm. in months and years. Yes. Um, you you see somebody that has achieved something and you think, oh, it was a piece of cake for them. It was so easy. No, it probably took a decade. 
Yeah. Right. So most of the most of the high end bodybuilders that you see on stage, it took them a decade, 10, 12 years to get there. Right. It did not okay. happen overnight. It, it is a progression no matter what you're doing. That's such an important lesson. And for some reason, it's really hard for people to understand or they, they always want to be the exception. You know, we're, we have well, we're, such a. What kind of culture do we live in, Sarah? I want it now. Instant gratification. Yeah. Yeah. You pay for it and you get it. But that's not how these things work. (laughs) That's really not how anything works. When you think about (laughs) it, nothing that's worth its salt, nothing that is good works that way. Religion doesn't work that way. Relationships don't work that way. Friendships, marriages, your relationship with your children, grandchildren. None of that works without time and practice and progression. If you truly want to develop that relationship and have, you know, a true connection with somebody or something. That's just my two cents. Nope. Amen. I agree. It's it's so So. true. So yeah. what other than India, what's the, what's the, oh yeah, get, check this out. You guys won't believe this. Uh, we're going to have to, we'll have to call Sarah a sexy grandma. Cause she's a grandma now. How's that working for you? It's great. It's the best thing ever. I just, I adore my grandchild and it, it's just like having a kid again, but it's a lot easier. <laughs> oh yeah. It's fun. We have. So like, I told you this the other day when we were talking, but like, I love it. Well, I'll set up little movie dates with the grandkids. They'll come over. Uh, you know, Nicole, my oldest daughter right there, she is, uh, she, uh, um, homeschools the kids. And so it's cool. Cause like I can schedule a movie day in the middle of the day and she'll bring the kids over. We pop some popcorn, find a good family movie on Netflix or whatever, and just have a good time watching it. And then I've sent you videos. Then the, the, the youngest girl likes to get on the floor and start going crazy. She's got some new moves right now that she just learned in Aww. tumbling class that was really cool. So, oh, it's so cute. It's just the best. I just love yeah. it. It is fun because you can wind them up and mm-hmm. send them home. That's the best part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I don't, not to be disparaging to anyone that has children at an older age, but I don't know how they do it because oh, even yeah. just one. My grandson just leaves me with no energy, but just all oh. the happiness in the world in my heart. But it's rough, man. man. It is. I, can, I couldn't imagine <laughs> being a parent right now. I couldn't imagine it. And all you grandparents out there that do it, that step in to help your grandkids and take on that role, I salute you because, yeah, that mm-hmm. is that's next level. And then, you know, when you got people like, think of dad. I mean, what did dad do all the time, man? He get the kids around him. That's all he was doing was spoiling them rotten. Yeah. <laughs> he loved the grandkids for sure. He loved to spoil kids. He did. He did. It was awesome. So what's the future uh-huh. hold? Like, what, what, where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Right now I work at a climbing gym and – we're expanding. We have three locations. We're opening a couple more really soon. We're in Utah, um, but we're opening, we're expanding into Arizona and we're going to do one more in Utah. And it's a big, beautiful state of the art climbing gym, like so beautiful. And we have yoga shalas. A shala is a yoga school in each location. And so I am the, yeah, I'm the yoga manager of all of the gyms. Mm. And I, I work with programming, hiring people, trainings, we do yoga trainings, we do workshops, we do a lot of education as well, it's just tons of daily classes, like almost all this all day long, it's full of yoga classes so that people can come in all the time. Um, so if you're ever in Utah, come find us and take a yoga class. The first one's on us. So I, I just um, will probably keep doing that as well as teaching classes. Like teaching is my favorite part of my job, but yeah. um, the managing awesome. part is there too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
that's that's like me my my favorite part of my job is the the working with clients and uh you know i have some clients that i'm able to get hands on a lot of what i do is you know nationwide so it's it's uh online coaching you know i do online programming and nutrition and stuff but when i can get hands on like one of the cool things i get to do here is um the my little local gym that i lift at because we, we live in a small little town but the, the little gym um a big uh chunk of the high school football team they train in that gym oh, and cool. so i spend a lot of time working with them uh just for free just for fun right i love the the teaching aspect of of being a coach uh i love it more than the like you say the business side i still have to manage the business side of it but yeah that part isn't is quite fun but it, it is fun to be able to you know decide what kind of workshops and stuff that we're going to be doing things right. like that when we get done here make sure you text me the the name of the the climbing gym that you work at and okay. i will put it in the description and stuff and so if anybody wants to check it out when they're out there, they, they can absolutely do that. Uh, let me ask yeah. you this, Sarah. Um, what, what do you think from, from like a beginner standpoint, like somebody who has never done yoga and they're thinking about it, what would you mm -hmm. tell them uh, about just the, the beginning process of it? And how do you think that that will progress their uh, mental and physical growth? taking a yoga so i would say first of all look for a beginning yoga class don't just jump into any class that sounds interesting look for somebody that teaches beginners and go to that first just start at the bare with the bare bones and as far as like technique stay to the middle path that's a, a tenant of buddhism and it's it's such a good one so the middle path means you're not going to push yourself too hard and you're not going to be lazy and, and you just stay calm and steady and you keep bringing your mind back into your body and listen to your body because people can get hurt trying to do these postures. <laughs> I bet. Um, so yeah, start at the very beginning, stay calm, stay chill. Don't push too hard because you'll, you'll get really sore if not injured. And stay with your breath. So you want to breathe through your nose, not through your mouth, and, and just keep a steady breath. The breath is such an important aspect of yoga. And so even if you're doing very beginning things and, and you're breathing calmly and paying attention to your body and your breath, you're doing yoga at an advanced level if you can do those things. So just take it one step at a time. And then the benefits you asked, um, there are a ton of mental and physical benefits, of course, all the things that you opened up with. Um, just being able to be calm is really important with this stressful world that we live in because stress is what kills people. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. Being able to stay to the middle path and, and mentally being able to just not push things away and not pull them toward us. Those are really basic yoga philosophies you just want to stay where you are be happy with what you have and do you know share your heart with people be a good person just yeah don't try to pull everything toward you and, and get your goals all at once because it, it's that. not like mm -hmm. i love that middle path sarah because yeah. you know i mean you think about it um yeah, there's times to put your foot on the gas and there's times to back off. But being steady, you know, what the, the, the turtle wins the race, right? This being steady yeah. and true. Uh, we have a word for zigzagging for highs and lows. It's called bipolar. <laughs> let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's stay in the middle. I love that because and breathing yeah. leads to that, right? Because breathing calms yeah. the mind, puts the mind in, in mm -hmm. place, allows you to slow down, think about it, and and make a, a right. good move. And I'm sure just like with bodybuilding and weightlifting, it's a similar thing. You'll be doing more and more difficult things with your body, and it's going to take a lot of focus and concentration so you don't get hurt. And if you can just keep that steady breath, and stay present, then you'll be able to reach those goals. 
Yeah, that breathing is very important in lifting weights. And a lot of people like when I'm training people in person sometimes, you know, when you're you're lifting heavy stuff, man, I have to be like, hey, breathe, man, breathe. Come on, breathe. Yeah. Don't hold your breath for two, three reps, you know. You 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 want to breathe. Really? And we we do it a little bit different because of the uh the the Volsa Vol Vols Vols. I always get that can't say it right. It's the Volspa maneuver. It's it's bracing, right? Uh, bracing with air and it's bracing mm -hmm. the core because you know and so you don't necessarily a lot you'll hear a lot of people say you know you uh, uh on the eccentric movement you bring your breath in and on the contraction you exhale but actually uh -huh. you should on the eccentric movement you bring your breath in you complete the movement and then exhale you don't cool. exhale as you're completing the movement. You do it at the end. And the reason for that is when you suck that breath in and you brace your core, it locks your spine down. It locks your abs down. It it protects your internal organs uh, by by bracing like that. So it's it's very important. And that that steady breathing, I mean, especially as you get later into a set, your body requires oxygen for energy. <laughs> Right. You, if you're not breathing, you're going to gas out. Yeah. And if you're breathing really quickly or shallowly, yeah, it, it's there's such an art to breathing. And I really recommend this book called Breath by James Nestor. And he is just oh, it's so fascinating. I, I listened to the audio book and it's just like I, I didn't listen to anything else until I was done with it. I highly recommend it to everyone. And he just talks about the importance of breath and different breathing practices and historically, you know, what people have used it for and how beneficial it is to breathe correctly. That's so awesome. That's neat that you guys use that as well. Oh, it's, yeah. Breathing is key, important. man. The body, the, the body needs oxygen for everything it does, yeah. right? For brain health, heart health, blood pressure uh you know energy it's a huge component in you know the atp process you know in the whole energy cycle of the body so very important mm -hmm. so it's we're we're getting a little bit later here let me let me ask you one last question uh before we get out of here if you could tell anybody anything what would it be about anything <laughs> Wow, you really put me on the spot. Your one piece of advice, what would it be? Just right off the top of your head. Just care for your health. Care for yourself. Care for your body. Start start here. And then you can help other people. It's just like being in an airplane, right? You want to take care of yourself first. And then you can take care of other people. <laughs> I, I love it. No, I love that. You don't know how many times <laughs> I've used that line. Because think about it, right? <laughs> if you're dead, you can't take yeah. care of anybody, right? Exactly. That's why they tell you that. If, if In case or you put the oxygen on yourself and then you help your child. Because if you die, you can't help them and they can't help themselves. So yeah. that is a great piece of advice. I think I think that is something that more people need to recognize is to – you know, to, to focus on themselves and be healthy. Cause that is really yeah. what's going to give us longevity. It's going to give us the opportunity to play with our grandkids and be with yeah. our family and be active and do those things. So that's awesome. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thanks for the discussion. No, it's good. And, uh, people, uh, like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'll post her social media stuff up. So you can check uh, Sarah out on Instagram as well as the gym that she works at. I also have some some uh, pictures of her that uh, doing some uh, fascinating poses. I'll, I'll throw those up uh, so you'll get to see those as well. And everybody, you know how we like to end the show out here. So everybody, you get out there and you work hard, peoples. And remember, don't forget to smile. Thanks so much for watching or listening. Remember... Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can find us on Facebook at Work Hard People's LLC or Instagram at Work Hard People's LLC. You can also find us on our website at WorkHardPeople's.com. Have a great day or night. Don't forget to smile.